Hey there, my meaty friends. This is Reed, a.k.a. Carnivore Chef. I'm back in my garage dungeon, a.k.a. my friend's garage living room thing. I don't know. I usually come here to do work whenever I'm down here. In today's video, I'm going to show you probably my favorite soup I've ever had. A lot of people like to call it a stew as well. It is gumbo. I've been making gumbo on and off for the past like six, seven years. The first time I ever made it was when I had a business doing meal prep. I did a very watery gumbo, didn't know how to cook well back then. And since then, I have learned how to make gumbo pretty okay. And then recently I was in a gumbo cooking competition. I'll throw up a little bit of footage of that now. So a basic gumbo is going to have a really dark roux, which a roux is just flour and butter combined and melted together but in gumbo it's very very dark and it's cooked through a lot besides that you will also find the trinity which is bell pepper onion and celery as well as meats sometimes it's as simple as chicken and sausage other times it can be like crab legs crab claws shrimp crawfish just anything you can think of uh, i've seen gumbo with okra in it i've seen it with very few ingredients that's still really good and this one is just my take on that I, I really just wanted to use as many techniques as possible that i could think of to make this as legitimate as possible so this is an interpretation of my favorite soup, which is gumbo. And before we get started, I'm asking you to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends if you think they'll enjoy it. And most of all, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. I wanted to closely follow some steps that I would take when making normal gumbo while keeping this as carnivore as possible. The initial step that I wanted to follow was to make a dark roux. Since a roux is equal parts flour and butter, and I can't do that, I decided on the next best option, making some brown butter. Before we even continue, I will pause right here. You will want to go ahead and have these ingredients nearby and ready to go. The likelihood that you will burn all this is kind of high if you walk away from it or try to add it in one at a time. Since I am a one take kind of person and a professional, I was able to measure and pour as I went along. I suggest that you have all of your spices in a bowl and your broth is ready to pour. Anyways. We want to get this butter as dark as possible without burning it. Once it gets to a deep brown and almost red hue, add in all of your spices so that we can toast them. This will not take long at all. 30 seconds at the most as this will start to darken very quickly. After that time, pour in your broth and bring it to a simmer. Broth and spice alone don't give us a great texture, so we'll have to jazz it up a little bit. With unflavored gelatin, of course. This gumbo will not be as thick as a traditional gumbo, but this will definitely help add some body. Just make sure it's unflavored. I don't want you to be surprised by orange flavored gumbo. I went ahead and added a quarter teaspoon of salt as a head start, let this simmer for a few minutes and give it a taste. The light bitterness from the toasted spices was pleasing and delicious but needed balancing. Add in either one tablespoon of white vinegar or the juice of half a lemon into your broth before setting aside. I'd consider that first part of the recipe to be the main point of focus. Anything you add after this is strictly up to you. For my gumbo, I went with chicken thighs. I cooked them over medium high heat and about two tablespoons of butter. We will be maximizing flavor by working on our fond, or the brown tasty bit stuck to the bottom of the pan for the fond uninitiated. I went with three large thighs that I seasoned up with about a quarter teaspoon of salt each. Let these cook on one side for three to five minutes or until a deep golden brown is formed. Give them a flip and cook them for an additional two minutes just to sear the other side. I went ahead and added a half pound of andouille sausage that I sliced up earlier. I want to go ahead and get this to start caramelizing while the chicken is finishing up. Speaking of chicken, we can go ahead and pull that out of the pan. They won't be fully cooked, but we can go ahead and get them chopped up. I chopped mine up into a pretty chunky dice. I'd call a chunky dice a bite-sized piece. Maybe I'll start a petition to change the word bite size to chunky diced. Once it's chopped up, you can add it back into the pan. I wanted some shrimp in mine as well, so make a little well in the middle if that's desired, and cook those for just a couple minutes. Give them a flip, and now we can add in all of our super tasty gumbo broth. Once it's added, start scraping the bottom of the pan to get that tasty fond up. Bring this to a simmer and reduce the low heat. I let mine simmer for an additional five minutes or so, but you can let it go for up to 10 minutes. If you'd like to simmer it for longer, add one to two cups more of your broth and you should be able to simmer it for at least 30 minutes. Ladle yourself up a bowl. This recipe makes three really big servings. I was able to share it with one of my non carnivore friends and I had a bowl left over for the next day. Top it off with some parsley for color, or not. I know a lot of you don't enjoy green things. And the flavor is exactly what I was looking for. It was so deep and rich, but it had a nice light mouthfeel. Come a little closer, really quick. See you next time.